now. If I uh, said it wrong, let me say it right, right now. Uh, NR is less than H of W. Mm. Look, I'm I'm not sure I can show that that's less than mutual information. Hmm. So now I, I'm not going to say anything. Um, we know <laughs> that NR is roughly the mutual information between the input and the output uh, because the cardinality of the input is 2 to the NR. Okay. Now, by data processing, this is less than I of Xn of Yn. Okay. By the way, there's no randomness in the f function Xn of Wn, so the only randomness in um, the signal sequence Xn comes because W is random. All right. So this is the data processing inequality. And then this is less than summation I of Xi, Yi. And on the midterm, you had something like this. And on the homework assignment, you have something like this where it shows that if there's some, if it's not a memoryless channel, uh, the capacity can be higher. But each of these is less than C. So this is less than NC. Therefore, R is less than capacity. Okay. So that's the proof. Um, none of these statements is quite true. You need Fano's inequality to uh, throw away a negligible term here and there. And, but it's a good outline. Okay, now what, what about the achievability? the achievability, the outline would be this. The probability that Xn, if I send the ice code word, the probability that that and Yn are typical uh, by that, I mean jointly typical. P of Xn is right, P of Yn is right, P of Xn comma Yn is right. The appropriate 2 to the minus N H's. And given that W, uh, given that I equals 1, is typically one. And the same thing, given i not equal to one, is approximately two to the minus n i of x, y. That turns out to be the trick that allows you to go from Feinstein to half a, 
you know, from many pages to half a page. So the probability that Xn, some other code word, gives rise to the Y, to Y, when in fact, that code word didn't go through the channel and cause Y, is essentially the probability they look independent rather than dependent. Remember, you're sending x n of 1 through the channel. You get y n. With high probability, y n and x n will look jointly typical. But uh, some other x n of i well, this didn't go through the channel. It has the same marginal as Xn, but it didn't go through the channel, so these don't have the right joint distribution. They look like they have the product distribution. Hmm, I wonder what the expected log likelihood ratio is for that hypothesis test. Expected value of log, the joint over the product. That's what I would expect my probability of error to be. That is the probability that I would think of random cause and random effect actually were causally connected. Under the joint, under that. So, if this is true, then you just have the following. This is 2 to the minus n i. That's your probability that y, y will always entertain the correct code word as a hypothesis. No problem. But it will also look at the possibilities, these other code words. How many are there? Two to the n on our code words. It will look at the possibility that each of these is causally connected to y and therefore is in the possible decoding set of, you know, what was sent. All right. Well, this is a lottery. If you have one chance in a million of winning the lottery, you better buy a million tickets. And then your expected number of wins of the lottery with replacement is two to, uh, is a million times one in a million, it's one. If you buy less than a million tickets, then you're not going to win. Your probability of error will be small. So, the point is this. Your probability of error, and now I'm speaking loosely, not the lambdas, just in general. Probability of error is the probability this isn't jointly typical. That's arbitrarily small by the law of large numbers and the notion and the definition of typicality. Epsilon. Plus, you get two to the NR shots, a, a disastrous confusion that occurs with probability two to the minus NI. And this goes to zero if R is less than I. So that's the outline of the proof. Another digression. 
for the multiple access channel, which is what happens every time you try to use the cell phone because there's a base station involved, everybody communicates with it. Uh, it's been proved uh, that the PE super N goes to zero for rates inside a beautifully defined capacity region. But it cannot, has not been proved uh, that lambda super n goes to zero. So there's a possibility when user one and user two send signals a seven here and 29 here, that those always yield a high probability of error. So it, it takes a conjunction of what's going on at the two separate transmitters. Uh, but it's, it's really an annoying possibility that you can't look at the absolute worst case, uh, worst pair of messages from sender one and sender two to a common receiver one. But what's true is true, and what's not is not. The problem with that one is we don't know whether it's in the first category or the second. OK, good. So here's the outline. Uh, if R is less than I, the probability of error can be driven to 0. And uh, since I was arbitrary, we may as well choose our code words according to a distribution P of X that maximizes I. So we get rates up to C. All right. So that does it for today. Uh, next time we will prove as much as we can of Shannon's second term.